Okay. Um, once again, happy Sabbath, everyone. Um, so for our inspiration for the second part of the program, let us sing Only Trust Him. Him 153. Good afternoon and happy Sabbath, wonderful people of God. Yes, happy Sabbath indeed. Um, at this point of time, we come to the second part of our program, which is the Divine Worship. And I would like to welcome you all here at Manila Center Seventh-day Adventist Church as we worship the Lord together. And let's feel the presence of the Lord um, this afternoon and be blessed as it is in, written in the book of Deuteronomy Chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. 6. And this word which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And let's prepare our hearts and minds as we worship the Lord today. God bless everyone. And for our opening song, let us all stand and sing. I sing the mighty power of God, hymn number 51. Let us all stand.
Our great God and kind Heavenly Father, this afternoon we come before your throne of grace, humbling ourselves, knowing that we are nothing before your sight. We are all sinners, yet because of your great love for every one of us, you have called us from the darkness into that marvelous light in Jesus Christ. We would like to thank you for giving us an opportunity to come together and praise you this afternoon. May the love of the Father be upon us and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will guide us today as we continue to worship you, our Lord and our Creator. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this point of time, brethren, we are going to worship our God through giving. It is says at the Acts of the Apostles, page 338, If professing Christians would faithfully bring to God their tithes and offerings, His treasury would be full. There would then be no occasion to resort to fairs, lotteries, or parties of pleasure to secure funds for the support of the gospel. Brethren, I am inviting you to um, worship our God through giving. Our deacons are now ready to collect our tithes and offerings.
Let us all stand for a word of prayer. Most gracious, kind, and loving Father in heaven, thank you for the opportunity to serve you through giving of our tithes and offering. May you bless each and every one of us, and also please forgive us from all of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And um, good afternoon again, everyone, um, brethren. Um, this afternoon, our speaker is a um, philosophy doctor student of Ayas. He is also a pastor and also a teacher of Mountain View College. Together with him is his um, wife and kids and also his friends from Ayas. Um, brother and sisters, let us give our time and undivided attention to Pastor Joseph, uh, Pastor Jose Espero. Magandang hapon po ulit sa inyo mga kapatid. Maying hapon sa mga taga Visaya sa Mindanao. Naimbag nga malamyo, kakabsat, para sa mga taga-norte. Ako po yung nagpapasalamat na nakarating muli dito sa ating church sa Manila Center. Ako po yung nagagalak na mag-share po sa inyo ng isang message na galing po sa Panginoon. Marami po sa atin ang siguro nagkakaroon ng sakit Araw, paminsan-minsan, marami din po sa atin ngayon na nagsasabi, sana wala, wala akong sakit. Kung di sana ako nagkasakit, sana naging successful din naman ako. Di ba, meron pong mga ganong mga experiences sa atin? Alam niyo po mga kapatid, marami pong mga experiences na hindi naging successful ang isang family, hindi naging successful ang isang business because yung father or isa sa mga members ng family ay nagkasakit. Meron pong isang kwento dito sa Bible, sa 2 Kings chapter 5. At alam ko po na familiar tayo dito sa, sa text na to. Ngunit babasahin ko po sa inyo yung gusto ko pong points na i-share sa inyo ngayong hapon na to. Itong si Naaman ay isang commander ng Syria. Nung panahon na to, ang Samaria mga kapatid, or yung tinatawag nilang Northern Kingdom of Israel, ay laging inaalipin ng kingdom of Syria. Ang hari ng Samaria during this time was no other else than Jehoram. Ay itong si Jehoram naman po mga kapatid, alam natin dito sa 2 Kings na hindi po siya isang magandang hari. Lagi po siyang nagbabackslide. Pinagsasabihan po siya ng prophet natin or prophet ng Panginoon na si Elisha na bumalik na sa Panginoon. Ngunit, Ganun pa man mga kapatid, hindi po talaga siya bumalik sa Panginoon. So, nung panahon na yon, si Naaman ay isa sa mga commanders ng Syria. At ang sabi po dito sa Bible, sa verse 1, He was actually a great man with his master and in high favor. In other words, he was very, very popular very successful person. But, ang sabi po dito sa Bible, all of these things are not attributed to his strength, kundi, ang sabi po, because by him, the Lord had given victory to Syria. In other words, ang Panginoon po talaga ang nagbigay ng pahintulot na maging isang bantugan na commander si Naaman. 
he was actually used by the Lord to punish the people of Israel because of their backsliding. Another description of this man, it says here, he was a mighty man of valor. Kung nakilala po ninyo si Jephthah, he was also described as this person. He was a mighty man of valor. And the Bible also tells us that God himself is described as a mighty man of valor. He was the commander of the Lord's army. So basically, kung titingnan natin si Naaman, he was ordained by the Lord to be his servant. But there's one condition that deterred him to move forward. You know what's that? Kindly open your Bibles to first or second Kings chapter five, verse one. The last part it says, "But he was a leper." In all of those accolades, in all of those successes, he has a deadly malady, and that is leprosy. Naisip na ma, ni Naaman, mga kapatid, na life is nothing. Life is worthless. In spite of all the insignias that he had in his uniform, life is nothing because he is going to die. Napag-isip-isipan po ba ninyo yung mga sitwasyon na yon? Mayaman ka nga, meron kang lahat, pero alam mo na lahat ng mga bagay na yon ay hindi mo madadala sa iyong libingan. Have you thought about that? Yes or no? Four things I'd like to share with you in the story of Naaman, that can actually help us prepare ourselves or to have a very good relationship with the Lord. One is recognition. Second is submission. Third, obedience. And if you have these three, the fourth one will come to you, and that is transformation. Let me repeat that, that again. One is recognitions. Repeat that after me. Recognition. Second, submission. Third, obedience. Fourth, transformation. Naaman recognized that he was a leper and he was going to die. So that when he heard that the young maid belonging to his wife told him or told her that there was one who could actually heal him, he submitted himself. Or he recognized that he needed the help of that young lad in spite of her status. So that he went to the king of Syria and told him, I will go to Samaria and get healing. Mga kapatid, when he told the king of those things, there are three things that was in his mind that I believe he was actually thinking. Although the Bible may not be saying that, but what the Bible tells us is, or what is written in the Bible, will tell us something that this is what is in the mind of Naaman. Number one, he was thinking that God is in control. What is that again? He recognized that God was in control. The Bible tells us, the text tells us that his victory was given by the Lord and he recognizes that. 
Secondly, he came to the king and asked permission to go to Samaria because he believed that this man of God can actually heal him. He believed that God is the God of healing. The God of Israel is the God of healing. First, he recognized that God is in control. Secondly, he recognized that God is the God of healing. And so the king of Syria granted him to go. Fellow believers, we have different maladies. But if we want to be healed, the first thing that we must do is we must recognize that God is the God of healing. Secondly, we must recognize that we all need healing. Are you with me? In his desire to be healed, he was thinking of bringing something. And the Bible actually tells us that Naaman brought 10 talents of silver, 6,000 shekels of gold, 10 changes of clothing, which just tells us how rich Naaman was. And he was thinking of bringing all of these things so that when he comes to that man in Samaria and present all of these things, he will receive healing. I don't know what's in the mind of Naaman, actually. Was he thinking of bribing the man of God in Samaria? Or was he bringing these things to show gratitude to the man if he gets healed? But I believe that when he brought this healing, he brought this, I mean, when he brought these things, he was thinking of giving thanks to the Lord. We have to recognize that God is in control and when we know that He's in control, we must recognize that we also need to give our offering. Second lesson that I'd like to share with you this afternoon Naaman, when he came to the man of God, I'm not reading all of those things in the scriptures. I'm going shortcut. I just want to show you some of the things here. The second thing here that Naaman actually need was submission. When he arrived in Samaria to the man of God, The man of God told him, go to the river and wash yourselves seven times. Kung sa Tagalog pa yun, makaligo-ligo ka nga. Seven times. Dip yourself in the Jordan River. And take note, it tells us here, your flesh shall be restored and you shall be clean. Yun ang sabi ng prophet of Samaria. But verse 11 pictures out the reaction of Naaman. Kung meron po kayong mga Bibles, basahin po ninyo. Hindi ko palang alam kung ano ang pagkasabi sa Tagalog. Pero sabi po niya dito sa English, But Naaman was angry and he went away. Galit na galit si Naaman. At pag galit ng tao, mga kapatid, alam niyo po ba na pwede siyang mag-walk out? So, ang ginawa ni Naaman, sa sobrang galit niya, nag-walk out siya sa harapan ng taong makapagbigay galing sa kanya. 
he went out. And not only that, he showed his anger, he also vented out his anger. Sinabi niya rin kung ano yung nasa puso niya. Ang sabi po niya, Behold, I thought that he would surely come out to me. Iniisip ko na lalabas siya at sasalubungin ako. Alam niyo po ba kung anong klaseng reaction yon? Minsan tayo yung mga parents, ganun eh. Tatawagin natin yung ating mga anak, Anak, lumapit ka nga dito. Ang sabi ng anak, Dad, dito lang ako. Ikaw lumapit sa akin. Ikaw may kailangan eh. So Naaman was actually thinking that the man of God would come and meet him. Why would the man of God do it before him? He was actually thinking of his status that he was still the captain of the army of Syria. Not thinking that he was actually a leper and in need of healing. So, you know, Naaman said, I was thinking that he would stand and call on the Lord and wave his hand over the place and cure the leper. Alam niyo po ba, nung mga panahon na yun, iniisip nila na pag ang tao ay may sakit, lalabas yung mga merong power na magbagaling, sasayaw-sayaw, at hihipuin yung ulo or kahit saan-saan na may sakit. At pagkatapos nun, gagaling sila. Meron po bang mga ganyan ngayon? Nasayaw-sayaw ang ka. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. May the Lord be with you. Just touch this and you'll get healed. Are there still doing are there still people doing that? Yes or no? Yes. But do you think Adventists will do that? Wave their hands, visit you in the hospital and then sing, sing hallelujah and all these things and then touch your wherever your sickness is, and thinking that you would be, get healed. Naaman was actually thinking about that. But that is not how the Lord wanted Naaman to be healed. And not only that, alam niyo po ba kung anong sabi niya? Sa verse 12, eh yung tubig, sa na, ang tubig namin doon sa Syria, sa Abana at saka sa Far Far, galing sa Mount Hermon, Mas malinis pa yan kaysa Jordan River. Bakit doon? Ako pa paliguin. Bakit hindi doon sa aming ilog na mas maganda pa kaysa ilog dito sa Jordan? And the Bible actually added something on the emotion of the Amman. He was not only angry. Verse 11 tells us he was angry but when you go to verse 12, at the last part of verse 12, it tells us, So he turned and went away in rage. No? Alam niyo po ba kung anong level yun ng anger? Kung angry ka, you can still think rationally. But when you are in rage, you are ready to kill a person. And this is what happened to Naaman. He was ready to kill anyone who would come against him because his wishes to get healed are not answered. But there are cooler minds, cooler heads that intervened. These are the servants. Sabi nila, bakit ayaw mo? Sinabihan ka na nga, please, our father, the prophet had told you, go and wash yourself in the river. Alam niyo po mga kapatid, minsan pag galit na galit tayo, meron pong taong makapag-awat sa atin that we are rescued from danger. And these are our family members. Those who are close to us. Don't turn them away because they can save your lives. Sa madaling salita, Naaman dipped himself seven times. Verse 14, it tells us, and I want to read this before you. So he went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God, and his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, 
and he was clean. He actually was restored. But before he was restored, he submitted himself. Mga kapatid, let's submit ourselves to the Lord so that we can get healing. Turn away from our old ways. If we've been abusing our bodies so that we get sick, let's stop doing all of those things. Submit and say to the Lord, I am giving my life to you for my healing. He submitted himself and obeyed the word of the Lord. Three things actually. Ang nangyari doon, mga kapatid, sa verse 14. He submitted himself. He obeyed. And eventually, he, get, he got healing. Four things that happened in the life of Naaman. First, recognition. That he needs healing and that God can heal him. Secondly, he submitted to the words of the Lord through the, the prophet Elisha. And we should also do that. And thirdly, when he submitted himself to the words of the Lord, he obeyed and eventually healing actually came. Transformation actually was the result of those three things that he did. Recognition, submission, and obedience. Fellow believers, in the transformation of Naaman, four things also did happen to him. First, there was a physical healing in verse 14. If you will notice in verse 14, it tells us, his flesh became a little child, and he was clean. First, physical healing. And second is, he was clean. It's actually a Levitical term which says that he was also spiritually clean. A person who is a leper is considered unclean, and he is ostracized from the temple. He was not allowed to have fellowship with the brethren. But when he becomes clean, he is actually restored. Physical and spiritual healing. And after that, after we have recognized that he was actually healed, Naaman himself, in verse 17, repented of what he had been doing. He said, if not, please let there be given to your servant two mule loads of earth. For, let me underscore this, things that he had said, from now on, your servant will not offer burnt offering or sacrifice to any god but the Lord. That is repentance. He had been worshipping the gods of Syria. He had been worshipping the pagan gods during his time. But this time he would say, I'm sorry, Lord. I will not do it again. That is repentance. And lastly, verse 18, he confessed, In this matter, may the Lord pardon your servant. When my master goes into the house of Rimon to worship there, leaning on my arm, and I bow myself in the house of Rimon, when I bow myself in the house of Rimon, the Lord pardon your servant in this matter. Naaman was saying, Lord, I have sinned before you by worshiping the gods of Syria. Lord, I have sinned before you because I worship Rimon. But Lord, today, I confess everything. Please pardon me. What an experience in the life of Naaman. 
when he said that to Elisha, he had a complete healing. Alam niyo po ba kung anong sabi ni Elijah, Elisha? Verse 19, if you have your Bibles, He said to him, what is that? Go in peace. Let me repeat that again. Go in peace. Fellow believers, when the Lord said, peace be still, He was not only saying that the ways and the troubles of life will end. No. But when He said, peace be still, He was actually saying, may your life be preserved. May you have bounties, bounties in your life. May all blessings be given back to you. And this is what Elisha told Naaman. He was saying, may your former position will be given back to you, but you would be better than what you were before. Go in peace. Brothers and sisters, I am praying for every one of us that we recognize that God is in control of our lives, that God is the one who can give us healing. Let us submit ourselves, whatever we have in the Lord, let's give everything to Him. And when we have submitted ourselves, let's continue to obey His will. For Jesus Christ said, You are my friends if you keep my commandments. And all these things, Jesus Christ said, if you seek first the kingdom of God, all these things shall be given unto you. I am praying that when we leave this place, every one of us will go in peace. May God bless us all this afternoon. For our closing song, let us all stand and sing, Draw Me Nearer.
Our great God and kind Heavenly Father, we are all yours. Not because we want to give all our weaknesses to you, but we want to give all our strength to you, the Heavenly Father. Although we are sick, and we are sick of living in this sin-sick world, we are committing ourselves to you. We are in need of your healing touch, and we want to be healed. We're longing for that day when there will be no more sickness, no more crying, no more dying. But we will have eternal life, eternal joy, eternal happiness. But while we are still waiting for that day, may every one of us will have a complete healing in you, physically, mentally, socially, and spiritually, so that we can go out and proclaim the praises to the world and tell them that there is a God of healing who is in control of each of our lives. There is a God who can give us peace, who can make us whole in each of our lives. And may people will also see the miracle in each of our lives so that they themselves will also experience the healing and accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Today, in the Heavenly Father, I am praying especially for this church, for each of the members, for each of the leaders, and for each of the pastors leading out this church, that you will continually give them complete healing so that they will stand out in this place and people will see that you are a mighty God. Thank you for being with us and for letting the Holy Spirit continually work in each of us, letting people know that we are serving you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we are inviting everyone to form a big circle for our intercessory prayer.